Yeah. Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. It's time for uh, June's Tech Talk with Pratik. I'm your host, Pratik Patel, a technology consultant with Ingram Micro. You know, I love using this forum to really showcase the latest innovations, you know, and then having, especially having a panel of experts with me that can really help to uncover new opportunities for my partners and resellers. It's just amazing every time. You know, this month's topic is RVIS or remote visualization. The reason we're talking, we're discussing discussing it today is because really, you know, the compute intensive graphical applications don't you know, make it possible for it to visualize data in new and really innovating ways. You know, the fact is that, you know, this technology really allows different industries to run powerful applications from from anywhere. So like such as oil and gas companies can assess geological data sets to locate exploration opportunities. Manufacturers and engineers can visualize systems, products, and even buildings in 3D. Financial service providers can visualize trading patterns to spot new opportunities. Medical professionals can examine high resolution scans to make accurate diagnosis and entertainment creators can generate complex CGI animation files. Okay. Simply put, advances in GPU technology, virtualization software and remote protocols have paved the way for RBIS to really move from the gaming world into the business industry and healthcare areas. Essentially, RBIS transmits complex 2D and 3D images from centralized data center servers and workstations across the network to remote users. But best of all, those remote users interact with the host system and its application as if, as if they were local to the user, which can offer tremendous advantages in cost and security to support really a geographically diverse workforce. So to help really help me um, make sense of all of this, uh, joining me today are David Lin, Technical Solutions Specialist with Intel, and Hugh Howard, Head of Healthcare Digital Transformation with Lenovo. To start things off, let's start with a quick introduction. Hey, David, I, it's really good to see you again. You know, I know we, we've been, we're part of this multi-part healthcare discussion, you know, that we've really, uh, you know, started last, last quarter. So in that regard, can you kind of uh, tell us about your role at Intel and your focus on healthcare? Sure. Thank you, Pratik. Um, so I'm David Lin. I'm a technical solutions specialist uh, at Intel. Uh, I'm assigned to support Lenovo, so that's why I'm partnering up with Hugh, who will uh, introduce himself next. I'm actually in Houston, Texas. I actually come from the oil and gas industry, which uh, is what Arviz was uh, initially built for. And so I've been working on this type of function, right, interactive, high-performance access to 3D, complex 3D images for decades. And so it's exciting that Lenovo uh, has put together uh, a modern solution using state-of-the-art technology to actually make this a reality. And as far as healthcare goes, right, Hugh is, is a business development uh, manager at Lenovo for healthcare. So he's actually dragooned me into supporting uh, um, a number of these different solutions. And it's exciting that we can address uh, other markets, including healthcare, right, for this type of uh, visualization solution. Perfect. Yep. Thank you, David. And speaking of you, really, I really appreciate you joining us today. Can you tell yep. us about your role at Lenovo and really, you know, what you've been up to lately? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us, Partik. Uh, super excited about uh, this opportunity to share with you our biz. Last quarter, we talked about medical informatics, SickBay, which is a waveform uh, predictive analytics uh, platform in which we're basically taking those uh, waveforms and warehousing them for AI uh, modeling. Today, we're going to talk about Arviz. Uh, I am the North American Digital Transformation uh, Business Development Manager at Lenovo. I'm tasked with really creating solutions that are have better innovation for better decisions, for better outcomes for the uh, hospitals and healthcare in general. Um, again, very excited to talk a more about our second solution that we're building out over here at Lenovo ISG. Perfect. Yep. Thank you, you. You know, everyone in the audience, your job is, as usual, really to to really listen, learn, and really identify customers where the sol solutions we'll kind of talk about today can really be positioned to address their needs. But to make it more interactive, 
please put your questions in the chat box and we'll get to them as, as they come in. And also, if you're paranoid like me, you're probably going to want to check the mute button one more one last time before we begin. But I think that's really it for the housekeeping part of it. So let's get started. David, let me uh, begin with you because I see you have my uh, that PowerPoint that I was looking for. So definitely, you know, the, you know, the first time I kind of heard about Arvis Solution was a couple weeks ago at Lenovo's Accelerate event. And as I understood it in the healthcare space, it has to do with remotely viewing medical images. However, with 4K imaging, it probably creates a whole set of a different problems. So could you explain how Arvis works and really, you know, what are some of the outcomes that healthcare facilities can really expect from, from it? Sure. Uh, let me jump right into it. It, it. Let me give you a quick overview, right, of what Arvis is. Oh, sorry, uh, David, I think uh, I see that you're muted. Thank you. <laughs> Too many buttons to click at the same time. So uh, what I wanted to say was that Arviz was built to provide a creator class workstation experience across the Internet, just as good or better uh, than a local uh, server class workstation um, at the same or better price, same or lower price. And uh, that allows all sorts of, of, of uh, secondary benefits, right? Not just on allowing workforce work workforce mobility, um, but also the data stays in the data center, right? So you can ensure that it is secure and for healthcare type applications where you have regulatory uh, requirements like HIPAA, high tech, right? You can enforce those in the data center rather than having the files move. But also Arviz is enabled to actually allow true collaboration, right? Beyond um, any of your VD, this is not VDI. Right. This is this is beyond VDI. If you have if you're trying to do some of these workflows across VDI and your images are dithering, they're blocking, they're tearing. Right. It's like it's not a smooth experience. This is when Arviz takes over. So if, if VDI works, that's fine. But Arviz is enabled to support a uh, dual 4K monitors um, at full fidelity. Right. So it is that creator class type application. Um, it is actually a consortium of technology providers, right, that have put together Arviz. It's led by Lenovo. Um, it's built on Red Hat OpenShift. Uh, Intel provides uh, the Xeon processors as well as the Optane to actually provide a much larger memory space, right, for uh, a, a multi-tenant environment, right, to be able to, to have the memory that they need. Uh, we're using NVIDIA GPUs. Um, we're using um, a product from uh, Mechdyne called TGX, which is uh, part of the magic, right, that allows that remote visualization. And then a Leo Stream connection manager makes this a multi tenant uh, environment. It actually is the very first implementation of a virtualized GPU in OpenShift. I mean, it is so new that actually uh, uh, we actually have developers from NVIDIA and Red Hat making sure that uh, the full performance and fidelity is delivered. And remember, this is containerized, right? So we have a much a better graphics experience and graphics fidelity um, through this container environment than you would in other virtualization type environments. In fact, you can't do this from the public cloud. Um, they're not set up to do this. Uh, they may get there eventually, but we are the first. So uh, as I mentioned, dual 4K, right? That is very high end um, remote. Um, I mentioned that uh, the data stays in the data center. I mentioned collaboration. Um, so the experience that you're going to uh, see, and actually I'm going to show the live live session in just a little bit, um, is as if you were at the, uh, as if it was at your desk, that workstation. Um, also important uh, element to note, since this is virtualized, we can actually dynamically change the provisioning of resources per user. Right, that delivers a much better efficiency because a lot of the current attempts to do this are dedicated one to one, as in you still have to have a full on server class workstation sitting there idling, you know, uh, uh, over 60 percent of the time, right? Because your, your your workers are not working doing shift work. So during the during the nights, during the weekends, those things are idling, right? Versus with this, it's multi tenant. You can support things. You can uh, build profiles dynamically to suit power users versus lightweight users. 
So it's very efficient. Um, and uh, we, we will support, and this is another first, um, we actually support Windows guests in the Linux, the, in the OpenShift containers, right? So it's full on, full Windows. In fact, uh, the, a majority of our activity right now is with Windows applications. Um, so I also want to mention, right, that this fits multiple uh, industries. It's very verticalized, right? You don't need, again, if, if this is not VDI, this is beyond VDI. This is where your uh, knowledge workers, right? So they're scientists, they're engineers, they're graphics artists, and these different verticals um, need that high-end performance. These are the customers buying your creator class workstations right now. So what we enable now is the no longer the requirement to have those workstations, but instead to consolidate and economize from the data center. And for the client, all you need is a thin, uh, it can be a, a Lenovo Tiny, for example, or even a laptop that has an NVIDIA T1000 GPU or better, right? That's the only requirement. And your latency across the internet needs to be about 100 milliseconds or less. So I actually showed uh, the demo I'm about to show you a little later um, at Lenovo sales kickoff in Raleigh, um, as well as uh, the Lenovo Accelerate conference, a partner conference in Las Vegas. And the development environment is hosted in Houston, Texas. So across half the country, we saw an excellent experience just as if the workstation was at the desk. So for healthcare purposes, um, what we're focusing on is an opportunity to allow radiologists, uh, users, so, uh, doctors, right, that actually need to look at high resolution images collaboratively, right, to have a secure workspace to do that in. So yeah, I think perfect, that, that bears a, a good good introduction there. Okay. Oh, definitely. That, that, that was great. So, you know, to kind of follow up on what you what you just kind of mentioned here, you know, what is the ideal scenario where our solution can be used? You know, what I'm thinking is, you know, would it be applicable for, say, only in a large healthcare system, or can it be deployed like for in a smaller, such as a urgent care or even a remote medical facility where it doesn't really require a large, complex solution? Entirely, yes. And in fact, this allows, uh, I know our healthcare system is, is very stressed right now, right? The doctors and nurses are overworked. Uh, they're, they're with COVID, right? It's like the whole health healthcare system is under stress. So this allows doctors and radiologists to consult remotely, right? So if, if someone in a remote location needs the advice from someone in a much larger hospital system, for example, right, this would enable that collaboratively, right? And uh, it would help streamline the workflow so that, of course, tied to this is an opportunity to help customers with their uh, PAX imaging uh, data management system, right? Because we know that customers are sometimes challenged to get the, the right records to the right places. So this would be an, a, a way to enable viewing the data remotely, but not having to move the data. Okay, perfect. So David, you kind of showed that, you know, there was, it takes numerous vendors to really deliver this Arvis solution. And I know Intel was a key contributor to that solution. Could you kind of help us understand how Intel has been collaborating with Lenovo really to drive this innovation for this, sure. for this space? Certainly. So we're teamed with Red Hat closely on this because of the, the integration with OpenShift as a foundation. So we jointly fund the development environment that Arviz is built on, and as well as we provision Optane as that memory expansion space. So uh, these, these uh, technologies, right, these products from Intel um, help make the solution real, as well as uh, change the price point. So that as, a, as you may have heard me say, it's just as good or better than a creator class workstation locally at the same or lower price remotely. Okay. So with that said, David, you know, what are the key factors that partners and resellers need to consider when they're really trying to determine if our business is an ideal solution, you know, really for their customer? Sure. So this is all about um, graphics performance, right? And if the customers are struggling to move the people to where they have to look at the images versus if they can streamline and make that doctor's time more efficient if he can be anywhere he needs, right, um, to look at the data that he wants to see. So if there is a challenge and a stress on uh, the imaging side of a hospital's business, right, this would be the ideal solution. Okay, so Hugh, let me uh, kind of turn it to you now. 
you know, could you kind of help us understand how Lenovo is working to deliver the Argus solution? You know, in other words, is Lenovo putting all the all the pieces, components together, or is that kind of le still left up to the customer to kind of, you know, to do afterwards? No, no, we just consider us the glue, right? We're spearheading the project, the consortium of these wonderful uh, value pro uh, partners from, you know, Red Hat, Intel, NVIDIA, uh, Mac Dyne Legal Stream, we're we're making sure that uh, things are updated, patched, and uh, we try to take everything off the plate of our customers so they can basically have a very robust experience with uh, visualization part T. Okay, okay. So this might be me uh, looking ahead, like a forward forward looking statement, but really, you know, is Lenovo planning to have like this Argus solution as part of that AI innovators program that, you know, Lenovo announced that Accelerate. You know, yeah. What I'm really thinking is, you know, would that mean that, you know, the solution would be, there would be a tested and verified solution that could even include like bombs or configs that were pretty much, you know, make it easily de deployable for our, for our partners. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we could definitely touch upon the AI innovators. Uh, we can, you know, set up those POCs. We can bake this in a testing environment that is uh, very similar to production before it goes into production. So there's no hiccups, Sparty. This is what we like to do. This is, you know, is almost something that we go in with our customers and sitting them down and say, you know, what's your expectations? How can we simulate it in a testing environment before we basically go live? If you could imagine, you know, images are only getting more um, graphically intense, more layers, uh, more diagnostics, uh, more aggregations. So we, you know, we're looking to basically set that up in a testing environment. Uh, AI innovators is a wonderful place to basically, you know, take that to. And uh, before we basically go into production, party. Okay. So then, I'm just trying to maybe summarize, or maybe the, what, what my thought is. So we 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 could kind of expect to see like t-shirt size offerings that basically say, okay, the different um, the, the 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 solution as in you know like a good, better, best kind of an option. I don't want to use the word good, better, best, but you know t-shirt sizing, small, medium, yeah. large kind of thing. Small, medium, large. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you you got small, medium, large, and it's mini or whatever you want to basically say. But uh, absolutely, we're looking to customize it, hand and gloved for our our customers. Um, and just make sure that what is going live is exactly what they need. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay, perfect. So, David, you kind of mentioned that demo. So, you know, I, I love it when, you know, we can demonstrate an actual solution. So, kind of, you know, could you, uh, you know, show us how that technology works, you know, while still complying with HIPAA regulations? Because exactly. I know that with healthcare that the HIPAA compliance is probably the, the primary thing that we want to make sure that we're that would adhere to so and I know we talked about you know collaboration so how does all that work you know and still not you know still not you know define kind of regulation sure sure luckily um you know all sorts of hospitals and uh, uh universities that, that made some data public right so that uh, people can do research on them so that's the data we're using so um I want to emphasize right uh, from from your last uh, comment about t-shirt size right small and large this is multi-tenant right um, this is built on uh, the foundation, the core of, of Arvis is uh, three servers. OpenShift requires three servers for, from an availability perspective. Um, so it's built on uh, Lenovo SR650s, 650 V2s actually, um, running Ice Lake uh, Xeon processors as well as Optane. Um, but it is multi-tenant, right? Our partner down here at the bottom, LeoStream, is actually a company that makes a connection broker. Right, so you can fence off and and contain and control exactly the resources that that guest has access to, and behind the scenes, you would manage the storage for each of those guests. Right, so if you as a service provider have multiple hospitals, right, that you're supporting, you can scale this. And remember, this is a scale out technology. This is this is a private cloud technology, right? So once you created your OpenShift cluster with a minimum of three nodes, you can simply add more nodes. Right, it's uh, a fact. You can add more nodes as you need, right, to scale uh, as customers scale up. This is a minimum configuration, and then you can scale it as you need. And again, all multi-tenant. But for a live demo, 
and I agree with you, nothing is better than showing it live, right? So actually, let me show you something simply to get access to that environment, right? I simply opened a browser window. This is running off of my laptop. Of course, you're seeing, what you're seeing is a double rendering, right? Um, the application, RViz, the application is going to be running in a guest in the, in the RViz development cluster in a data center in Houston. I'm logged into it. I simply open my browser, go to uh, this, the website, right? And we actually have a managed service uh, partner, right? That actually does the integration support for this because it's, it's massively complex. But uh, this connection broker is set up. And so I simply pick uh, the life science guest. And I've already done that. And I get this login. And what we're looking at here is a uh, PAX viewer. It's actually an open source PAX, PAX viewer, uh, as well as the data is public. And so here I'm, uh, like I said, this is running a data center in Houston, rendering it to my laptop uh, that's located in Cyprus, about you know 30 miles away. Um, and then I'm logged into Teams, I'm showing it to you. So this is a double render. And so you look at the responsiveness of this, right? Now this data actually is, uh, as I've found, uh, some of the legacy PAX images, right? Or to me, not as, as big as I'm used to. I'm used to seismic, 3D seismic. Um, but um, there are all sorts of exciting markets and customers and development that's happening, right? To where even more advanced imaging uh, formats, much higher fidelity than this, um, are being developed. And uh, the desire to interact with it, like for example, uh, there's a 3D mammography push, right? Because to discover uh, tumors, for example, uh, it's much more useful to look at the data in 3D, right? You can look underneath. Right now, this is just a torso, right? We're looking at the spine and organs of this image. And so what's actually happening here is, is that um, it's a whole collection of 2D images. And actually this application is taking them and interpolating and rendering live in 3D. So this is actually a significant GPU and computational workload every time we look at things a little differently. Here, I'm grabbing the grabber here and I'm just changing the plane of my interface. This is live. So this is the kind of work, right, that I could see a team of internal medicine or radiologists wanting to look at, right, to, to try and make a better decision of what they're seeing. So David, on, on this, on the demo front here, it, would it be one person controlling the actual view or, you know, could I actually take control and say, okay, yeah. I want to be, I want to look at it from a different angle? Yes, you absolutely, if you had a, a, um, an RViz login, I could simply uh, let you into my session and then hand you the mouse and keyboard and you can drive. And so collaboratively, we can talk about, well, I want to look at, I want to look at, I want to look at this side. And then I would hand the mouse to you and you would say, well, no, I want to look over here and I want to look at a different slice, right, of, of this organ that I'm looking at. Um, I think it's a uh, stomach's down here. This might be uh, veins. Uh, I'm not sure exactly because I am not an internal medicine doctor. <laughs> Uh, but you could simply hand it back and forth to you, for example, right? And we could collaborate and look for something that is of concern. Okay. All right. Perfect. Yep. I like I said, I love demos because you know you get to see see it in action, and definitely I, I loved how you kind of walked through all the way from the beginning, from how it was actually, you know, uh, how you logged in and things like that. So definitely. Uh, right. Yeah, you know, great. So and that's the beauty of this, right? We can we can show this. This is all about being remote, right? So no worries about COVID. Any opportunities you have out there, we can simply set up a session and we can show it to any other prospect, right? It's, it's all we have to do is schedule schedule an appointment, make sure the resources are available. Okay. So that uh, David, I did have one question that came in. I think pretty much right down your alley here. You know, um, basically mm -hmm. it was mentioned that you know earlier that Arviz is built to support dual 4K display on the end user side. Does that support yeah. extend to refresh rate of 60 at 4K? Um, I'm not sure th what the refresh rate is. Um, I am actually the, the, the memory and the storage guy, but we can definitely take that question back and find out exactly what the refresh rate is on those 4K displays. Absolutely. So was there another question? I, I thought I saw a, I have a couple questions, so. If you have another one, Jim, let me know. OK, so I think uh, let's um, let's continue on with with what we're you know what we're doing here at the moment. And you know, Hugh, I'll, I'll kind of jump back to you for 
for a bit here, but really, you know, I, I like the solution, you know, and it has that, uh, you know, a Lenovo 360 story to it from a IDG ISG side of it. So, you know, you know, what, you know, what I'm trying to figure out is really, can you see it being used for other applications? You know, so the ones I kind of mentioned before, you know, uh, something with, um, you know, entertainment or even gas or oil was, you know, one of them. So, so my question really to you would be, you know, where do you see this technology going? And if you have a more a entertainment side story, I'd be very interested to hear that as well. Yes, absolutely. I think it spans all the industries uh, critique. Anything with a graphical intense application uh, that needs to be rendered uh, to multiple parties. Uh, you have to imagine that, you know, since COVID, uh, people are want to basically have options. They want to work life balance. They want to be able to work from home. You know, this is a technology that addresses the hybrid workforce. Um, across, you know, the platforms of media and entertainment. I know that we're setting up something major with a major uh, uh, film, uh, media and entertainment in the film industry that they're basically taking a strong look at it uh, with a POC. Uh, oil and gas is in production right now uh, and uh, hear really strong feedback uh, positive with uh, their remote workers that uh, they're able to have the uh, fluid See that they're looking for and the, the low latency that the application demands. Uh, so uh, again, as the applications become much denser, um, we're going to keep up with that technology to make sure that uh, we're reducing the latency so the end user has a very great experience with the application. And, and I would just want to remind everyone, right, this is a, a the class of applications to where there's usually a very large amount of data involved. And so do, historically, right, you would do it in the office with a bunch of high speed networking to users offices where they would have those server class workstations. That data is so big that it's impractical to move and work from home. I've heard of actual oil and gas companies where their users had to work from home um, and they had a nightmare trying to ship those workstations home, uh, a nightmare managing the data and also these workstations typically draw so much power. We don't think about it at home, right? But I personally have had experience, right, in the office supporting these 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 class of workstations, to where it draws so, so much power, puts off so much heat, and is so noisy that people don't want to use those things at the house. Yeah, and you still have the option too, David, of collaboration. That's huge, right? It basically, you know, frees you up from you know, a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, kind of workstation yeah. that basically helps you expand uh, to the possible of collaborating with a group and a team. And, and that that's really strong with uh, being able to provide better outcomes right. with diagnosis. To, uh, to, this consult, scans. to yeah. consult across the country, right? It's like yep. if there is a, if mm -hmm. there is a, a, a heart doctor that wants to consult with an expert and they have a, a, a support agreement, right? And this is, this enables, this opens new doors, right? To where literally you can have experts consult briefly on a surgical decision across the country or across the world. That's great. I think the second question came in, Parti, if it talks about what about color accuracy, I'm thinking of this in terms of graphics, designs, and animation, and how color space accuracy is an important factor. Mr. Lynn, you want to take that? <laughs> sure. So that actually is a pretty good question, right? It's so uh, we're at the bleeding edge of the graphics compression capabilities. What, what the magic, as I mentioned, from the remote graphics part of this of things is using Mechdyne TGX. And so they're at the bleeding edge of using the latest uh, graphics compressors, right? And I'll go into some very specific detail. This is enabled by taking the render of the application as it comes out and is intercepted by, by TGX and it's run back through a hardware accelerated uh, uh, streaming MPEG compressor. It's actually a chip on the NVIDIA board. Actually, and most, most graphics cards, I'll say most uh, advanced graphics cards have this capability, but that has to be done to make the data move across the internet at a reasonable response time. So um, right now, uh, I believe it's uh, H.265, so the, 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 the ubiquitous, Streaming video standards, H.264, streaming impact, right? The next one is H.265. 
So uh, Mechdyne is at the bleeding edge. They'll have 444 Color Fidelity um, in their summer release, I think in about two or three months from now, right? So that is the latest of what's supportable. And the, the issue is a, a lot of the uh, um, applications may or may not output that kind of, or require that kind of color fidelity. But that's why we're working with Mechdyne. They're on top of it. And we'll be having the latest, you know, state of the art cap color capability, color fidelity, uh, as they release uh, their products. Perfect. So, Hugh, I know we kind of talked about a lot of different things, but you know, I think it'd be it would be helpful, you know, if you could kind of help to summarize the opportunity, really the market that's out there, the solution for Arviz, and you know, I think for me, really, what I'll do is this way, it'll kind of help my partners really understand what the next steps are and you know and trying to move forward with this the solution yeah absolutely thank you partip again it's been wonderful a uh, good demo there uh, david uh main takeaways imaging centers medical imaging right radiology uh ct scans pads x-rays uh larger takeaway is basically any 3d graph intense imaging applications large data sets right Customers around that, workforce, one to many, hybrid uh, workforce out there, um, and you're looking for a solution. Um, the, the workforce would like to basically have renderings at home. The, this would be it, clinics, outpatient clinics, remote clinics, right? Uh, being able to centralize your data sets, and especially within healthcare, HIPAA, right? Being able to have all this data reside on-prem HIPAA compliance. I, I would definitely say, you know, those are some of the buzzwords. Those are some of the takeaways. Those are some of the uh, kind of thought process that should pique your interest to go out there, um, you know, get with you, get with us, and let's have that conversation to see what we can do to uh, see if our business is a fit. Perfect. Yep, thank you, gentlemen. And finally, I have a question for both of you. As technology leaders, what makes you feel excited or inspired about you know what you're really hearing from your customers david how about you what are you seeing that's out there that's really you know exciting or inspiring you sure so uh um you know when uh when the first big buzz about a digital transformation started right a couple of years ago right i was like thinking all right what what is this what is everyone talking about so i went and got chuck siebel's book right and it talks about you know the, some of the major elements of that digital transformation one of those cloud right in other words big data so, but it talked about concepts. So I've been thrilled to work on Arviz because it actually takes those objectives and goals and, and, and potentials, right? And actually delivers them for these kinds of applications, right? Move not on. not your Office 365, not your VDI, but true as we as we go back to this picture right here, right? These these applications run by these businesses are helped are what they use to do their business, right? People build buildings, they create cars and airplanes, they build movies. And so the fact that we can actually do this now is thrilling, right? It's like that we can actually fit the digital transformation uh, uh, context, right? Concept, right? But actually realize it, you know, it, it, with these industries and these applications. So I'm thrilled to be working on this as we go, right? It'll get better and better, faster and faster, and we'll be able to support more and more data. Perfect. Uh, Hugh, I know you're out there, you know, discussing solutions with partners and, and users all the time. What are you hearing that from the front lines? Well, it's a solution that captures the imagination and the fact, you know, when they see it, they said, this is what we've been waiting for. As in the fact of, you know, you're able to uh, work with the best of breed in uh, virtualization, containers, Kubernetes, uh, some of the things that are under the engine and be able to maintain it and you know really have a thought leadership with regards to imaging they definitely want to sit down and talk see exactly again if it's the right fit and, and then basically proceed so you know the bottom line with the healthcare is pretty much you know providing better outcomes and being able to uh you know drive you know uh even sharper quicker um you know outcomes for their uh, providers and their patients. So a lot of great feedback. Again, you know, we're just really coming to market party. And uh, I think uh, this is a, a great way to evangelize 
Arvis and, and try to get in front of, you know, those thought leaders that really understand the solution and are looking to possibly, you know, put it into uh, production. Perfect. Thank you, Hugh. I know we, we just kind of talked about this a couple of days ago where I actually talked to a end customer about the Arvis and within them, you know, within the 10 seconds, they were on board. They were like, I want to learn more. I want, you know, I want to see more. So hopefully, you know, that kind of continues on. And then, you know, you as being partners and resellers on the call, you know, you should be able to kind of, you know, take that enthusiasm, you know, bring, you know, move it forward. But, you know, really, I think, you know, I want to be respectful of everyone's time here. You know, let's kind of stop here, here for now, but, you know, that we can always continue the conversation offline. But before we conclude, I want to give each one of you in the audience really a call to action to really identify a customer where this Arvis solution can be proposed. And I will take the responsibility of getting you the appropriate resources, whether it's from Lenovo, Intel, wherever we need to get the resources to be able to help you progress your deal. So, you know, that call to action, you know, is hopefully speaks to, speaks to you and you can actually, you know, help me kind of move this move this solution forward because I, like I say, it's an easy solution to understand and it's, it's a powerful uh, product that you can actually use to actually improve the overall outcome of, a, of healthcare. So remember, if you need help starting a conversation with your customers, please look to us at Ingram Micro and the experts on the panel here to really help you connect the dots because it really is about, you know, taking the art of the possible and turning it into the art of the reality. I want to thank my guest, David Lynn of Intel and Hugh Howard of Lenovo, you guys are always working on the coolest technology. <laughs> and if not, if nothing for that reason, I always love, you know, collaborating with you guys. Additionally, you know, I want to thank Intel, Lenovo, and Ingram Micro Organizations for their continued support and give me the freedom to do the topics and the technologies that I want to hear about. So, you know, I'm, I'm really appreciative of all their support. So uh, that's really it for now. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you, Parteep. Thank you, guests. Thank you very have much. A good one. Cheers. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone.